So 45, 45, does anybody know the square root of 45? No. Well, let's, we've got calculators, right? 45 square root, so 6.7, is that accurate? No, it's actually 6.708, is that accurate? Am I in freeze? Thank you. Is that accurate now? No. Yeah, there's still a 2 afterwards, and still a 0, and still a 3. And, and actually, my calculator gives a few more places, but even that's not completely accurate, right? And when we say don't estimate, or, or don't, um, when we say exact answers, if it's going to be a non-repeating decimal, in order to have an exact answer, you might need to leave part or all of it in a square root, and that's fine. That's fine. But when we, when we use a decimal, oftentimes what we're doing is really just cutting off or rounding a whole chunk of it, and we're losing some of that, that number, and we want to avoid doing that. So square root of 45, I can rewrite this 45 as what times what? 9 times 5. I could also rewrite it as 3 times 15, right? Now, one of these is going to be a good option. The other one's going to be not so good, right? My point is, is that oftentimes for these numbers, there's multiple ways to rewrite it. You want to think about which way, to re which way rewriting it makes sense. Now, if you may remember properties of square roots, if you have a number times another number within a square root, it's actually the square root of both of those numbers times each other. So it's like this. Square root, how it's often written, is square root of A times square root of B is the same thing as square root of A times B. Now, so I'm all I'm doing is saying square root of 9 times square root of 5, or these are two different options. I wouldn't do both of those. I'm trying to make a point that one of those options is best. You wouldn't do both of them. But 45 could be written as 9 times 5 or 3 times 15, right? Either one is 45. Who sees which option's better and has a reason why? Talk to your group real quick. Which option's better? Well, it's not nothing, it's 1.7320. I don't, I don't have an exact answer for that. What's the square root of 15? Something else, right? So what's the point? What's the point of rewriting square root of 45 if I, as square root of 3 times square root of 15 if I don't know the value of either of those? Right? This is not a good strategy. In fact, I'm making it more complicated by having two square roots. I'm not going to pick that way because I don't know square root of 3 or square root of 15. Why is this way better? Yeah? I actually know one of these values, right? What's the square root of 9? 3. So I can rewrite this as 3 root 5 because the square root of 9 is 3. This is considered, you know, simplified radical form because it's, I mean, it, uh, some might consider it simpler, right? Now, square root of 200, I could rewrite the square root of 200 a variety of ways. I could write the square root of 200 as square root of 10 times the square root of 20. Is that a good option? It's probably not the best, right? Because I don't know the square root of either of those. Now, I could break these down. Square root of 2 and the square root of 5. That doesn't help me either. Square root of 5 and the square root of 4. 5 times 4. I do know the square root of 4. It's 2. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5. The square root of 5 squared. Right? If we take square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Square root of 5 squared. What's the square root of 5 squared? Five, so that goes to five. And then I've got another two. And then we've got a root two. But 
This is probably not the best way to do it. Instead of writing square root of 10 square root of 20, Sam? Square root of 100 times square root of 2. It's a lot easier way to get to the same answer. What's the square root of 100? 10. Ten. Done. Now, just to, I, I really should have gone through that whole thing. Just to show you, you can get the same answer. Square root of 10, square root of 20. Square root of 2 times square root of 5 times square root of 5 times square root of 4. Thumbs up if you're following where I got that. 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 4 is 20. This is square root of 2. Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just 5. Square root of 4 is just 2. So this is where I get the 10 and I get the root 2. Same answer. It's a little bit more efficient here. So, okay, 25 times 8. You can get 5 square root of 8. Why is this answer different? Right? 25 times 8 equals what? 200. Right? Why is 5 root 8? Why am I getting a different answer here? You can simplify square root of 8 to what? Four times two. What's square root of four? So it is actually the exact same thing. It turns out to be the exact same thing. Thank you. Now it's the same thing. So the answer, the question is, is this the same thing as this? Yes. It just looks different, right? It's, it's in the same form. Just like it's four halves the same thing as two. Yes. It's it's equivalent. It just looks different. All of these things are equal to each other. Everything that I'm circling is equal to each other, right? But just like I, don't, I wouldn't say the answer is 100 over 10, I'd usually say the answer is 10, I typically, typically wouldn't write the answer of any of these except for the most simplified, which is this one, which is these two, or well, these three, right? Yeah. Great question. The number in the square root, th that, that's, that's a really important question and how to figure that, that out. If it, is it fully simplified? How do we know that, how could we have figured out that square root of 8 wasn't fully simplified? Think about the factors of 8. What are the factors of 8? 2 and 4, and really 2 and 2 and 2, but 4 is in there. If the number in here has a factor that's a perfect square, 3, I'm not 3, 3, I'm thinking of 4, 9, 16, right? If one of those factors is in there, you can 10, you can, or not, uh, 100 I mean, uh, 10 is the square of 100. If you have Basically, you want to simplify out something like this because we know the answers to these things. Right? If you can factor one of these values out of it, then you, you, you know what the answers are, are to those things. From square root of 8, we could factor out a square root of 4. And I think that'll make more sense the more we do. So let's, let's keep progressing forward here. Mm hmm. Square root of 18, same as what? Square root of 9 times square root of 2 over square root of 2. These cancel out. So we have 3. Now, the other thing to mention here is that square root of 18 over the square root of 2, another way of looking at just like the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times square root of b, multiplication and division often go hand in hand. So this is also true. If you have square root of a divided by b, it's the same as square root of a divided by square root of b. What does that mean? Instead of writing it like this, I could just write it like this. 
That's another one of the properties. It's the equivalent of the multiplication one. Both of these are true. So square root of 9, get the same answer. Answer is 3. Because the square root of 9 is 3. Raise your hand if you're confident you got this fourth one. You take a minute with your group. Talk about the fourth one. Right. Several ways of thinking about this problem. Uh, one way is to say, okay, square root of 2 times square root of 2, that's square root of 2 squared, which is what? 2. two. Square root of 10 times square root of 2.5 is square root of 10 times 2.5, which is the square root of 25. Is that as simplified as it can be? No. no. We can, square root of 25 is simply 5. A different way to think about it, right? Just multiply all these together. 2 times 2 is 4 times 10. Let me actually write this out. 2 times 2 times 10 times 2.5. This equals square root of 100. Equals 10. Sure. Sure. It's just using this several times. Question? Oh, okay. Great. All right, I want to give you a little bit more time to finish these last two now that we've talked about these. So finish up these last two. Square root of 75. I could write square root of 5 times square root of what would this be? No, 5 times 15. Is that right? 
Okay, does that help? No. Yeah, is this a good way to do it? Wait, why is this a good way? Well, okay, I guess, I guess if you did, first off, is it true? Yes, because 5 times 15 is 75. If I further reduce this, then I suppose it could be considered a good way to do it because square root of 5 times square root of 5 is what? 5. There's your answer. But a different way to do it, which I think is better, you want to think of the biggest square that you can factor out. What's the biggest perfect square number that I can factor out? 25. Right? This is probably, it's going to be a little bit quicker. What's the square root of 25? Done. All right. Here's, here's my question. Can I do this? Square root of 16 minus square root of 9 minus square root of 6. Is this simply 16 minus 9 is 7 minus 6? Is this just simply square root of 1? Again, another way to ask this question is, can I just do, like I did with multiplication, like I did with the division, can I do 16 minus 9 minus 6? If I subtract squares, I'll get this, get the square root of 1. Answers 1? No. Yeah? No. Can we do that? No. Is this a good, good idea? No. So remember how I said multiplication and division are similar here? If, if something applies with multiplication, oftentimes it applies for division. This works for multiplication and division. This property is not true for addition or subtraction, which are kind of brother and sisters. Addition and subtraction, right? They're very, very, very related. So, did everybody get one for this? Yeah, no. 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 Uh, no. No. Actually, uh, asking, did everybody get this? Nobody can really answer that without knowing. So that's a bad question. Um, did it, anybody not get one for this? Right. So whenever we see this conflict, that means that someone did it wrong, right? And this method doesn't apply. Let's actually, well, let's actually take a look. Let's do it a different way. What's the square root of 16? What's the square root of 9? What's the square root of 6? Okay, we don't know. So 4 minus 3 is 1. Is 1 minus square root of 6 the same as 1? No. That means one of those ways was incorrect. Well, 6, you could write it as 1 minus square root of 2 times square root of 3. Do either of those help you? No. So that's your answer, 1 minus square root of 6. That property that we discussed only works for addition, or multiplication and division, not for addition and subtraction. 